For Keeneland Connections this week, we put the spotlight on Brookdale Farm once again after I'll have another, and Bodie Meister ran 1-2 in the Preakness. Uh, Fred Seitz, Joe Seitz with us from Brookdale. Fred, let's start with you. Since you were in Baltimore for the Preakness, uh, what was that like in that very thrilling stretch duel? What, were, what was it like for you? What was going through your mind? It was one of the most exciting uh, races that I've ever been to, first of all. And afterwards, I was just completely overcome with emotion. I shed a few tears even, actually. I, I don't know why. I guess it's just pride of being having a little attachment to the horse. But uh, the breeder happened to be sitting behind us. And I, I think all of those things just made a lot of emotion come out. Mr. Clark's had a long time association with Earl's Farm, right? Probably close to a decade, yeah. When you uh, were watching that race, I don't know if these thoughts came into your mind, but I've, I've heard them e express that it was reminiscent of Easy Goer and Sunday Silence and their Preakness duel, or that this two-race rivalry between these two horses has been like uh, affirmed in Alidar or Secretariat and Sham. That's pretty elite company to be mentioned with. After they crossed the line, I thought the same thing. You, you know, you, when you think about Preakness stretch drives, you think about those two exactly, and I did. They came to my mind, too. Uh, Joe, what's this been like for just everyone here at the farm and, and now getting caught up in this excitement of perhaps having the first Triple Crown winner come off this farm and had been done since 78? It's this is what we all hope and dream for. It's what you all work for. And it's, quite frankly, it's a little bit overwhelming because it's, it's just fabulous. So everybody on the farm, from when they first touched him as a foal until he went onto the sale, everybody had a little bit of ownership, a little bit of uh, responsibility, and it's just... Nice to see it kind of come home like this, and we're hoping. 34,000 foals in, in the class of, uh, uh, I'll have another in Bodie Meister, and I think there were 4,857 that made it into the uh, September sale catalog at Keeneland, as those two did, 69 consigned by Brookdale, and they run, uh, Brookdale products run 1-2 in the Derby and, and the Preakness. And uh, the, the thing I've always found in all these uh, outstanding thoroughbred farms, there's a great pride in from the first person that, that touches them up to the owners of the farm. That is so true. It's it's our crop. It's, you know, some people make wine, some people grow corn, we grow horses. So if you're able to produce a good crop, it it makes it all worth it. And that's kind of what happened this year. I'll have another uh, sold in that September uh, book five sale at Keeneland for $11,000. So uh, Fred, obviously on, on looks, nothing stood out a, about him at that moment. But uh, what do you remember about him from the days he was here and preparing for him in that sale? Uh, one thing we could say about him that stood out a little bit was that he was a good mover. Uh, we, you know, in a crop of yearlings, we'll have quite a few horses that we call a good mover, and he was in that category. But body-wise, he was just kind of a little bit immature, leggy, uh, nondescript. As that's, that's the word Joe came up with that is, it fits in perfectly. And I think the fact that he was such a mellow dude when he was a yearling, a baby and a yearling, that almost added to the fact that uh, he was nondescript because he was everything was really easy for him. He never, we never had any trouble with him, so it was just a, a real simple raising process, and uh, that's really all I can say about him. I mean, he was just there, and he was uh, he was easy to easy to take care of. One of them. That easygoing nature should serve him well in what should be just a, another wild uh, atmosphere with the big crowd for the Belmont Stakes. It certainly seems like it. It seems like he uh, he doesn't turn a hair when he's you know in traffic or having to having to make a move during a race. It seems like he just kind of does what he's told when he's told. So I think uh, a little extra brain power has something to do with that. Uh, Joe, when these horses are are prepared for a, a sale and then taken taken to that sale, it's it's a big change of pace for them, I'm sure, out of what their routine has been up to that point, and uh, whether they're being shown daily to to prospective buyers or uh, other horses around them are. There's a there's a hubbub that that goes on. Um, uh, talk a little bit about uh, how that process uh, works and what do you, anything you remember about. I'll have another from those days. Sure. Um, well, the preparation process has come a long way over the last 10 or 15 years, and now these horses are much better prepared for the sale than we used to be used to do in the old days. In the old days, you'd start them a month out, maybe two months out, keep them out of the sun, and take them over. Well, now they're they're exercised on a, a free walking exercise machine. They're hand walked at a crisp, brisk pace. Uh, a really super energized nutrition program. You know, a lot of grooming. So these horses, when they get there, are fit. They're, uh, they're little mini athletes is what they are. They're ready to be broken and go straight into early training. So um, 
when they get to the sale, they, uh, they immediately start showing. We ship in one day and the next day they're showing and it's just, about, uh, just a matter of how many people want to see them. And there's a lot of all shows that happen for each group. So um, Al Have Another would have been on everybody's list for all shows and then he would have been pared down, pared down for some select looks and he wouldn't have had a whole lot of them. Uh, he brought the average that Flower Alley was averaging that book for that sale. He sold exactly on the number, 11,000. So he brought what he should have. But um, I remember you asked me about remembering him the day of sale. I remember what stall he was in. I remember what barn he was in in Barn 25. I remember the discussions prior to about what he might bring, and he brought about that. So it was fairly run of the mill, but it's much different now. Absolutely. Uh, the the dam arches, Gal Edith, uh, didn't had just a one start, a win at Belmont Park. So hopefully that's a good omen, and uh, didn't have uh, a long. Uh, list of, of offspring at that point to go from. Obviously, uh, her, her reputation has uh, increased significantly, but uh, talk a little bit about the pedigree on that side. It looks like there's a ton of stamina for this particular challenge that this horse faces. Well, there's the best of everything. His first dam sire is Arch, who had tactical speed, but seems to get a lot of horses that can go out of ground, which is perfect. And then I believe it's uh, Pleasant Tap was the second dam, second dam sire, and he is known for distance. And then Caucasus, uh, uh, was uh, third, dam, third dam sire, and he's also a classical distance. So I think he's made to go a mile and a half. He just hasn't been asked yet. Uh, uh, Fred, uh, when the, there's all the uh, the hubbub around the barn, I'm sure you were probably there to, to see the horse there in the, the barn at uh, Pimlico before the race. Uh, does he, do you, do you see some of those same, that same personality that you saw back here on the farm in those early days? I actually went to the barn after the race. Um, the, the people that own him and the trainer are really good about letting the public interact with the horse. So we were all standing outside the barn when he finished his cooling out and also came out to get his bath. And in a small little area, this horse is standing there getting bathed by his handlers. And there's 500 or so people, cameras clicking, and the horse was just standing there, perfectly calm as could be. This is. 45 minutes, hour after the race, so he's still a mellow dude. He really is. Maybe he'll be the people's horse. He did the same thing after the Derby. Uh, Joe, you guys at, at Brookdale are the uh, the perfect ones to, to spread the message that there are that someone can pursue this dream at, at uh, you know at really about any any price point because uh, Bodie Meister's out of uh, book two. This horse was uh, out of book five. Eleven thousand Bodie Meister went for two hundred and sixty, and that's part of the the mystery that is uh, I'm sure sometimes maddening and sometimes exciting in this game. That's true. Um, most people tend to think towards the front end of the sale. That's what makes the headlines. That's what makes, that's the easier part to buy out of. It's these nuggets in the back that um, a lot of good horses come out of those books in the sale. Keeneland would be able to provide you some great stats. Some really good graded stakes horses come out of there. So who cares what his price tag was back then because it's a little different now. Well, guys, uh, congratulations on, uh, on the run this far. And uh, everybody, Fred's going to uh, New York, right? That's what we think, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.